Hi, I'm Dr. Scout. I'm the director of LGBT HealthLink, and each week we bring you in three minutes or less everything you wanted to know about LGBT health and wellness in our world. Uh, we are part of CenterLink, the National Association of LGBT Community Centers, and we do this in partnership with the National LGBT Cancer Network. So let's get right to it. Let's hear the top stories for this week. In our first story this week, we're really proud to see the White House honoring Andrew Cray as an Affordable Care Act champion of change. Earlier, we covered the sad passing of one of our young LGBT health leaders, Andrew Cray, from cancer. Now, we're very pleased to see the White House honor Andrew Cray's leadership as an Affordable Care Act champion of change. We say, well-deserved. Next up, over half of LGBT youth feel unsafe at school. The Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, GLSEN, has just released the results of their biennial school climate survey. And while the news has gotten a little better than the last time around, it still shows a wholly unacceptable level of harassment and fear in schools. We're particularly upset about this since everything that happens earlier in someone's life has a bigger impact on their health throughout their whole life. So there's a lot of work to do here. Next story, The Advocate and HIV Plus magazine have launched a campaign to talk about PrEP for the 31 days of October. Follow the discussion on social media at hashtag 31 days of prep and catch some smart think pieces like one calling for an end to prep segregation for gay and bi men of color. Next, we want to point out a case study in excellence, Planned Parenthood Out for Health program. Kudos to Planned Parenthood in the Southern Finger Lakes region of New York for showing us what committed people can do to change our health. After research found no trans services in their area, they built them. While the Gay and Lesbian Medical Association has now honored their achievement, perhaps the bigger testimony is from one of their clients who says this program has literally changed my life. Good job. Next door, the Navy is launching a survey to inquire about the mental health of LGBT sailors. We like the Navy's new plan to launch a survey to explore the psychological and emotional health of LGBT sailors. But this week, other news about the military isn't just positive. It's about the murder of a trans woman in the Philippines and the U.S. Marine being held for that crime. Clearly, the military is making progress in LGBT issues, but they have a ways to go to be trans welcoming. And our last story, is there 3.9 times more skin cancer for sexual minority men? A new large-scale study so shows that 16-year-old sexual minority men were 3.9 times more likely to indoor tan than other men. The authors expressed concern about an increase in skin cancer as a result, but of course LGBT data are not yet collected on cancer registries, so we can be worried, but we can't yet get proof. That's it. That's all your LGBT health and wellness stories for this week. Thank you to Michael Bear, our researcher, the National LGBT Cancer Network, to Centerlink, and since I should probably practice what I preach, I think I'm going to go out for a run. See you next week. Same time, same place.